Charlie, in terms of changes that Steve Porfit might make, I guess you don't want to you don't want to axe everybody because that just leads to absolute chaos with your selection and your continuity. But certain players didn't play very well. So, so we'll talk about fly half specifically, I think, in a bit. But what do you think England will try and do in terms of other changes? Wow, it's, it's such a tough question because not only well, Thank you. we've got one one force change, haven't we? Oli Lawrence out with a at the hamstring. Um, Manu Tuilagi is with quite nice, well, helpful timing. Um, is his suspension has elapsed and he's been in um, for the last two weeks, which is hopefully going to prove pretty handy for Steve Borthwick. Um, I don't know whether they want to reconfigure the pack and, and Johnny Hill's return to the training squad has something to do with that. So maybe one of um, one of potentially Cheson drops to the back row. There are whispers, as I say, that Ludlam was going to be at eight instead of Dombrant um, before Courtney Laws' injury. Uh, so there are those options there. I see the mid and and shock. We're looking back at the midfield, aren't we? But so there are a couple of couple of combinations that you can either go obviously with two distributors, whether that's Smith and Farrell or Ford and Farrell and Tuilagi at thirteen, or one of the best performances that they've had in Dublin in living memory was two thousand and nineteen when they went Farrell Tuilagi Slade. Um, so. I would say it was probably it would probably be up to how much continuity that they can keep and whether they want to whether they see Manu Tulagi as a twelve or as a thirteen. I would have thought they'd see him as a twelve, to be honest, just because of the way it was the way it seemed to be, um, the way that the, the squads have been shaping up and the fact that Marchant played thirteen in that first first game and then they went with Lawrence and, and Slade, but Slade that would be that had been keeping Slade and Slade was. Um, one of the quieter players, obviously, obviously um, replaced around forty-five-ish minutes, I think, by mm. by um, yeah, Farrell. Early, yeah. And Farrell immediately, as I said said earlier, me- immediately just brought that direction, brought that organisation. So you wonder whether you, f- you fear for Henry Slade on the back of that. He's the guy that drops out, and they go with. Um, and what we said, what we said after the very on the very first pod, I think, after the Scotland game or the second one, was that. Smith and Farrell do at least have a little bit of existing cohesion going into going into this game or recent cohesion from the tests that they've played together. So maybe that gives them a, gives them a little bit. But Henshaw came off the bench, didn't he? For Ireland, he's back, and even though they don't have Ringrose Ireland, they're going to have a they're going to have a pretty hefty uh, dynamic midfield, which is going to really test England there. Charles, it seems ca- um, it seems kind of bringing bringing Tuilagi straight back in and and Johnny Hill straight back in w- would seem. Like a bit of a lurch, given they haven't played, and I appreciate too, like he's been banned. But given, you know, there's been a bit of continuity, and it's like, okay, let's just bring in back in a couple of heavy guys. But actually, is, is that what they need? Like, how do you add more power into this side without completely disrupting it? Mm. Yeah, it's a good question because there's a number of those English forwards who really are going to be in the team this weekend because there isn't a better option not necessarily because they're deserving of their place after last weekend. You know, the back, the back row was completely outplayed in all areas at every minute of the match. Um, I think Jamie George and Carl Sinclair as well have, have not had their finest tournaments. And if there were better options, then they would be looking over their shoulders as well. The, the, the thing about bringing Johnny Hill back in, could he be looking at, at Maritoje at six? That was my obviously, thought. That was my thought. Yeah, obviously, 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 the line out is so crucial uh, against Ireland, and actually, the line out didn't go so well against France either. Um, could he be looking at Marrow at six, having two lumps, Chesham and, and Hill in the second row to, to 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 get more power in the scrum? And Johnny Hill, of course, is an excellent maul forward. You know, that's probably his forte. Um, could he be looking at Itoji at six with maybe Ludlam at? at eight and and Willis at seven because I mean it's OJ for all of his strengths and he was one of the shining lights for England on Saturday he doesn't really play that much like a sort of traditional lock forward he does play more of a six really he is more of a sort of lock six hybrid so I wonder whether he's looking at that and and, and maybe for this weekend it's OJ at six with with the absence of Courtney Laws and Willis at seven and, and Jack Willis was uncharacteristically quiet against France you know that in fact that's probably the quietest game I have ever seen him play either for Wasps Toulouse or England um, is that Toulouse I mean, players may- doing their homework do you think I mean there's what there were what eight of them in the starting 15 or something ridiculous do you think they were just you know knew how to shut him down 
perhaps, but I just think it's also just very difficult as a jackler. It's very difficult to get your hands on the ball at the jackal if your team is constantly on the back foot and reeling and the opposition are playing at such pace and offload it also if it, France offload more than any other side. So if you're offloading loads and, and the ball is off the floor, then how is the Jackal going to win it? They're not. And it was telling that, you know, Willis's effect on the game was minimal. Um, in terms of just and behind, are, are we all sort of in agreement that Farrell has to come back in? Well, is that, is that, is that sort of in some guys, either at 10 or 12? I, I would say so. It, yeah, it's um, good. You've brought that up because we need to have a chat about who's going to start at fly half. So I think this is probably the time to do it. Uh, we've had Smith, we've had Farrell. Steve Balfour, when we were at Penny Hill last week, had an interesting quote about George Ford. He said, George Ford's going back for more game time and that he'd been tearing it up in training. And we're very lucky to have three world-class fly halves, which I thought was quite interesting. So if that is the case, Charlie, I'll come to you first. Who is your starting 10 in Dublin this Saturday? Oh, can I can I give you two options? I, I, I think I think if they go ten twelve, I think they go Smith Farrell just because of the unknown factor. I think it's just such a monster game to bring back forward four, and I think you've just got that little bit of momentum with how Smith and Farrell have at least played together for a little bit. Um, yeah, I would I I would I, th- I agree that Farrell needs to be on pitch in in some guys, and I, I think that probably should be at 10 um and for me that would mean to laggy slade although i'm really was really low on how slade went and then we're looking further in the back line as well i think with farrell at 10 he likes malins at 14 and i think malins might be under threat from his play for his place from someone like henry arundel so what i'm telling you ben is i <laughs> i'm really struggling to work this out in my head i got asked this got asked this at full time and just went, I, I have to be on the fence on that. I would have to, it's why they get paid the big bucks, that they've just got to have some thought, some thought of, some sort of thought process to go through to get to get an answer to this. Um, Is it a bit wasteful to have all three in the 23? Yeah, it, I think yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, definitely. especially when you've got someone like Slade, who even if you do go to distributors, Slade has got that little bit of history, although albeit a little bit of history covering covering the back three as well, because he's so versatile. So, but, but yeah. But geez, I was so 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 low on how how Slade played on Saturday, just just from the lack of organisation outside Smith. Um, you know, Smith kind of likes to play fast and likes to play maybe to break out of structure. But England structure, things lack of structure let them down. That was all, that was what that was what helped France to absolutely wreak havoc at the breakdown was that they were over committing and under committing. And as soon as Farrell came on for the for the small window that he had. Um, <laughs> had as many backs as he'd like um you saw that there was that little bit more pre- precision and accuracy and that's what they're gonna that's what they're gonna need in dublin mm. charles easy fly half of course um oh, I, I mean i i i'm tempted by farrell at fly half just simply because of the amount of center options that that um that steve borthwick has called into the squad Obviously, Guy Porter of Leicester's been recalled. Joe Marchant's also there. There's Manu Twalangi. There's Henry Slade. And Henry Slade was poor, as, as, as Charlie's touched on, against France. Um, but I do think Borthwick could do much, could do a lot worse than pick um, George Ford at fly half, potentially with Farrell at 12, and maybe with I don't know, maybe Marchant or Manu at 13. And it's going to be rainy in Dublin. The forecast is terrible. I mean, th- th- he could do far worse than pick George Ford and his spiral bombs. Um, it- it's going to be an evening kickoff. It's going to be dark. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be floodlights. England could just go there with nothing to lose and just try and stop Ireland playing. Just try and make a mess of it all and see if th- and see if that gets them, you know, over the line. I, th- I think what is very telling, um, Colsey, you've mentioned this already. What is very telling was that first. England got the free kick at, the, at that. Is it the first scrum that they got a free kick uh, against France? Marcus Smith attempted a spiral bomb off that mm. free kick. So that is clearly something that they've worked on. We, we haven't seen him do it that often successfully in an English shirt. So certainly not to the level of success that George Ford executed that skill with Leicester. Uh, and it didn't work. He kicked it far too long. It was and and Thomas Ramos lapped it up. 
He was very, very annoyed with himself, Marcus Smith, and that was the last time it happened in the entire game. So it is clearly something that they are looking to exploit, and there is no better exponent of it than George Ford. Is he ready? That's the big question. Is he ready? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I do think he could do worse than pick Ford at 10 and just say, right, we're going to go there and we're going to be a bit boring and we're going to be a bit conservative. But you know what? If they went there and they were boring and they were conservative and they won 15-12, no one would care. You could just go Ford, Farrell, Slade and just kick everything, couldn't you? I mean, well, I, there is that. <laughs> I, I think, I think um, yeah, I'm not entirely sold on bringing back Manitou and Laggy. Um, I'm not sold on Slade, especially uh, after the way he played on the weekend. It feels a bit soon for Ford. I feel like Smith needs another go. How did how did he go for sale? I think I think fine. I mean, they lost. They lost, and but they they got back into the game. But I think fine. But I I think they might end up back with Farrell at 10, just because of convenience. Um, very quickly to wrap up, because we, we're out of time, can we just get Ireland going to win a Grand Slam? Yes. Three yeses. Charlie. Big yes. Charlie, big yes. Charles. Yes. And I will say comprehensive yes as well. <laughs>